Hello gamers and welcome to Pet Place uh, Football Manager 2014 with Watford episode number one from season three. Uh, it was a very interesting season two, to be honest. Uh, very, very stressful. I mean, very, very stressful. Uh, and surprisingly, the first season also seemed stressful a bit, at least with the uh, episode number two, right? I was very frustrated there, but on different reasons. <coughs> Here, my job was really, really on the line, and I managed to survive for now. Cheers, guys. I hope you're drinking your tea. No beer for now. And um, we have just started um, the third season. It's 2 September 2015. Whoops. I keep pressing the wrong buttons. And uh, I did some transfers, which... It might have been, you know, like a bad idea because I got too many players in and the uh, team is very, very unorganized right now because, you know, new players, some of them don't even speak English. Something to keep in mind if you are new at Football Manager. A player might seem interesting, in interesting. Uh, it, he might seem to have good stats. But something that you need to keep in mind is watching if he speaks English. And you do that by uh, click on information. And here at nationalities, you will see the language spoken. Uh, there is also a hidden stat that says adaptability, uh, which you can't see, which usually the scouts can tell them about you and um, see if how, how good how and how fast the player is going to adapt to you. So the transfer window just uh, finished. And this is the English transfers roundup, round roundup, yeah, roundup. I said it right. And it is another example of a really, really boring screen that hasn't been updated for ages. It's a wall of freaking text. Okay, I got England some stats here, which I don't really care. I got the reputation of Premier League, which I really don't give a fuck. But the important thing that is right here, it's basically not presented in a good way. Icons, pictures, stats, something more useful than wall of freaking text. So, Wonder Kid uh, Nath Nathaniel Kalobach got transferred to Manchester City uh, from Chelsea for $36 million. Midfielder Paulinho joined Manchester United for $34 million from Tottenham. <laughs> oh my god, Luis Suarez uh, went to Manchester City from Liverpool for $36 million. It seems that 36 is a magic number. Maicon joined uh, Chelsea for uh, $24 million from uh, Porto. Striker Alvaro Morata joined uh, Chelsea from Real Madrid for 24. And what do we have here? Yeah, bigger spenders, $85 million. Manchester City, of course. Meanwhile, the recently relegated Blackpool. Yeah, Blackpool is in League One right now. And they got uh, 17 players. Yeah, I think they even got some players from me. I remember for a fact that they got Adam Federici. Who left from reading and I was I, I I was having him on a short list because I was planning on getting him but I got Valdez in the meantime as you saw in the last episode. So something that I wanted to show you in the last uh, episode but I couldn't because I needed to advance some more is the season roundup. This is basically what happened last season. Winners Chelsea and uh, let me actually show you how the Premier League looked uh, last season you could have seen it but i was basically looking on the bottom <laughs> well basically chelsea manchester united uh, manchester city liverpool tottenham and stoke yep that's about right and of course we survived on the bottom we were relegated reading norwich and west ham kind of interesting that burnley survived but teams like norwich who had a pretty decent team i mean some players uh, went down and West Ham, come on, West Ham had some really great players. And uh, I actually tried to get Andy Carroll, who got injured again. I mean, he got injured like two times this summer. I was planning on getting him. Uh, the offer was like 
for four and something million dollars, but then I canceled because Andy Carroll was asking for something like 10k. I mean, come on, just sit in the championship, lower your demands, and then we will talk maybe next season. He's not like a really bad player because I mean he has strength, bravery, determination, heading, and work rate. I I, I could really use a player like this, a striker like this, that's going for the head, going for the head with the ball, not. What you are thinking about, you pervious pervert. Anyway, top goal scorer uh, Oscar Cordozo, who got signed for uh, Real Betis for uh, free. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, every time I start to um, casting, talking, I start coughing up. I had some problems, I actually bought some something to drink. And that would have been a pretty nice player to get for my team. Why wasn't I paying attention? Most as is Chris Brunt, I was actually considering on buying him. Uh, maybe it was a bad idea, a decision that I didn't bought him. Uh, well, for once, he's from England, and not sure if he's a homegrown player. Yeah, he should be homegrown player. But uh, yeah, in case you might have figured it out, I had to basically look for good players that are homegrown in order so so I wouldn't wouldn't have to select uh, from the 25 players that I have to register for the Premier League uh, in order to avoid to select juniors. Uh, right now I'm sitting kind of good. I have nine of them and 25 players registered and I do believe there is only one junior there. So overachievers Stoke, underperformers Arsenal, yeah, eighth position. Media prediction five, and they said five. <laughs> Signing of the season, Oscar Cordozo <laughs> and uh, Dombia. Yeah, he was pretty good. Worst sign of the season, this dude from Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, he's fast, he's, has in, he's having some agility, technique, dribbling, flair. But that's about it. I don't really like the composure, the concentration. I don't know. I don't also like the price. So for the Sky Bet uh, Championship, Wigan promoted and Wolves, yay guys, Wolves promoted. All right, Wolves promoted. Look like bam, bam, boop, boop. Good job. Signing of the season, this dude for them and runner up, this dude. Worst sign of the season, Sam Baldock. Oh, poor fellow. And I remember me looking at him, thinking to buy him. Anyway, let's look at um, Premier League uh, transfers. We kind of look, well, surprisingly there haven't been like big, big money spending. We are there with this, basically. Let me actually show you. So we go to Watford, we go to transfers, we go to transfers history. And this is what happened. I had the budget. Surprisingly, I had something like, they gave me $28 million, I believe. No, only 19. I remember it being larger, but I think I moved some of the money to salary. Look how much salary I'm. Um, sorry, look how much salary I have. Remember last season I was like 500k at maximum 600k, and now I'm almost 1 million. So, this is what happened basically. No, Norwich got relegated, and I got this dude for free. What do you guys think about this guy? I mean, he's 32, yes, of course, but he was free. Well, it's never free because you do have to give him some money and the agent some money, but it was everything was under 1 million. And I, I, I do believe that he kind of dropped a bit. His stats dropped. Mm, something dropped. The long shots dropped big time. I remember him having more, uh, more dribbling or something, but he's still pretty amazing in a way I mean with uh, first touch 15 yeah I do remember him being somehow better I think passing technique teamwork which is awesome for an attacking midfielder center uh, of the ball flair determination decisions creativity composure anticipation natural fitness he's still pretty city well at 32 years old and pace 13 that's nice he's kind of weak with strain you know it's one of these short Argentinians guys that's going and passing the ball around so maybe it is something that our team needs he's also a staff he has a profile that I, I noticed that after and unfortunately he's not speaking English yep he's not speaking English so he might need some time to adjust 
but he's good as uh, you know three stars and a half oh and by the way i've signed some um some staff under uh, i got an under 21 head coach and i got this dude and then only when he signed i noticed that it's under 21 i was planning on getting him as an under 18 and then i had to get another guy and i was like ah god damn it but it's good because they are also teaching everyone and i got uh no i got this an assistant coach for uh, for them just well basically i was looking at someone that can teach attacking and his judging player ability and judging the potential is minimal and you will be like yeah it doesn't matter well it doesn't however every time i go to a player you know this starts this starts the uh, stars there i get him selected as default and i don't know how to change that because it's not like that it's like this david coles know how to uh, judge player potential and he's this guy is telling me three stars david coles who knows how to do it he's telling me two stars and a half i mean come on and it's default selected as david law and i don't know how to change it which kind of sucks so i got uh dario for free i was actually trying to get uh, a couple of other guys but when i saw this guy is free I said okay i will get it and you know how i feel found out i actually hired some scouts one from brazil that had uh, a pretty good uh, knowledge there and he suggested him something like that and when i saw him well, okay okay let's sign him and he did play he did play in these games i played four games in total three in the premier league <coughs> and he managed to score versus cardiff and he played uh, pretty well overall then i got russell martin from norwich uh, as you know, you know we had problems with the defender, right? I was actually consider considering a couple of them. There was another one that sold to someone. I forgot. Maybe I can look after it at my shortlist. But I think I removed them already from my shortlist. Mm, not this guy. I was looking at Kelly, but he's kind of high value. Yeah, it's not on the list anymore. Mm, I was also considering on buying a defender, but anyway, I saw this dude. I said I saw that he's homegrown, and I said, okay, he's not looking very bad. He was at Norwich and he wasn't happy because they are relegated, and he basically wanted to leave. And look, he basically played at Norwich, and his average rating was seven, and he was even player of the match six times. So he's not bad considering to the stats. Again, I told you guys uh, in the last episode that stats aren't everything, right? <clears throat> yeah and i should actually do some voice training do you guys know how to train your voice like there are different kind of exercises because if i'm doing like <coughs> it's immediately my voice starts to hurt and i like <coughs> and i have to cough and that's not good yeah it's good tea it's actually good tea a bit more expensive than normal but it, it has flavor anyway so I got here, I mean, tackling 13, that's not bad. Positioning 16, that's pretty good. And he's decent overall, and he also has crossing and dribbling. And, I mean, it's not like the bomb, but he w he had the stats that made me spend the money on him. I mean, he wasn't really expensive, like $3.1 million. I do believe it might have been a bit more, but I did one of these, uh, these deals that, uh, I mean, he has an appearance fee. And the shout-out bonus were kind of large. He was asking for more salary, and I tried to negotiate a bit down. But anyway, let's see how he was going to play. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. He had the stats. That's why I decided to buy him. He wasn't, like, super expensive. I needed money on other areas. I got Vladimir Weiss. Or Weiss. Weiss. Or something like that. I had this guy, uh, you know, guys from... If you watch the last uh, series with uh, full on, when I play with Wolves, I had this guy for ages, ages, and I remember about him. And I said, okay, let's check him out. He got, he let's check him out. He just got a red card, and he got suspended for like three games. And uh, his stats are basically technique. He has some pacing, uh, pace passing, it's passing. Jesus Christ, but. Long shots, okay. First touch, okay. Dribbling, okay. Corners, okay. Acceleration and pace. I finally have a... And off the ball. I finally have a player that can really go. And if you guys remember, uh, from the last year, I was playing him as a midfielder right. 
He's natural right now as a midfielder left. Why? Because he's basically an inside forward. This guy, as you can see, he's, uh, he's right foot only. So, and you will be like, why would you want to play a right foot player on the left side? It's going to make problems when he crosses the ball. Yeah, true, but he's not going to really cross the ball. Uh, what he's going to do is cut inside, which means that... Uh, let me see if I can... I uh, see he's here. He's not going to go like this and then bam cross the ball with his left foot. He's basically going to go like this and then he's going to cut inside, come inside like bam. He's going to co come like this and when he's coming in like this on this position, the ball is perfect for for his right foot in order to shoot and he's going to go like bam. You see? That's the basic idea behind this. So I actually changed my tactics because of it. And the information He's speaking English already and he's avoids using weaker foot, which might sucks a bit because, he, well, never mind. Actually, it's good because if he wouldn't have had uh, this, if he, he wouldn't had have this, I think it's right. <laughs> he would try to use his left foot, which sucks and he would uh, really suck, right? Prefer he cuts inside, which is perfect and runs with the ball often. So let's see what he's going to play. He didn't actually play that well. And as I've said, he got a red card. And then we got this dude for $7 million. Kind of a lot. I mean, his salary is also kind of high. Also from Norwich. I was looking for someone else to have there. And <laughs> if we look at his stats, his stats don't really mean a lot. I mean, he kind of sucks, right? 666. Six, six and uh, yeah i'm not sure he did manage to score a goal versus cardiff we will have to see how he adapts and how he's going to play he's decent overall he's also an inside forward basically as you can see he's left footed he has crossing he has dribbling he has uh, some first touch some technique decisions 15 which is okay determination 15 which is okay so let's see how he's going to play in a way you, you guys know that I have Faraoni. And for Faraoni, I actually got... Look, his crossing is now 17. <coughs> I got offers like $12 million for him. And uh, if I play like that, this will allow me to play Faraoni as a defender right. Or a wing back right, something like that. And which might be okay. I know I simply try to spice things up a bit. Not sure if, if if it was the best call. I mean, I did spend a lot on uh, snod, Snodgrass. Snodgrass. Robert the Snodgrass, right? But uh, there, w to be honest, there, were, there w weren't that many choices on what to get. And this is why I actually went for him. Again, I was looking for someone native in English. In England, sorry. And in English, of course. And I actually thought that he was a uh, you know, homegrown player. But I don't think he is because he was playing in uh, Scotland um, when he was young. But it's still okay. Let's see how he's going to play anyway. We got John Guidetti on free transfer. We got him on trial. I was kind of, I decided not to sign him. But then I was like, yeah, we do have Jalev Vossen and then we have Griffiths. And Griffiths isn't really that good well. And Vossen didn't really play. I still believe in Vossen, don't get me wrong. But I said, okay, we need someone else. And again... We have four stars here, but if you select uh, David Coles, he will tell you that he actually, I'm not sure that this report is showing what. Oh, never mind. It's, it's okay, I believe. It should be okay because the summer it's four stars. But right now he's, uh, he still has a lot of potential. I mean, come on. Two stars and a half and the potential of four stars. And he's already 22 years old. Let's see how that's going to turn out. Training wise. I'm training him at composure. Let's see if that's going to improve. He did score a goal or two. Yeah, he scored. Yeah, that was, that was in a friendly. Never mind. But we do have another choice there. And then I got an, a message from agents. You know, you get messages from agents. And I saw this guy. And I scouted him and I was like, hmm, I actually kind of need a midfielder or a defender midfielder I was actually looking on buying uh, Miguel Veloso you guys remember him but he was asking for way too much salary the money the transfer was something like four million 
<coughs> and uh, but then I said, okay, I'm not going to pay that much salary for him. And then I look at he, this guy and I said, okay, he's saving teamwork and work rate, which is something that I love, and some creativity and composure and some anticipation and passing is great. I mean, 16. Uh, technically, of course, it's not really that great. And I kind of needed another defensive midfielder, you know, ball winning midfielder. You will see exactly why. But I decided to sign him. I mean, his contract is not really that high. He does have an appearance fee that's going to rise things up. But I prefer to give him an appearance fee than give him uh, 50k per month, right? Because I'm not going to play him every game. At least that's what I'm considering. So I got him. He did play two games. He was pretty tired last game. I didn't notice. But uh, let's see how that's going to turn out. Again, as I've said, too many players. And we just got this dude as a defensive midfielder right now, like right two days ago. He didn't even have ch a time, a chance to play. Again, as a backup, I'm not playing too much for him, as you can see. Uh, I don't believe I'm playing something else like transfer money, but he's not huge. And I got him again as a backup. He does have some pace, uh, passing. He does have some tackling. Again, teamwork and work, uh, work rate, something that I'm looking on in a player aggression 15 balance agility stamina strength it's not bad let's see how he's going to play i do not believe he's speaking english yo he speaks english and he's shooting from distance and shots with power that might not be a good idea because his long shots is only uh, 13. i don't know we will see we will see again i needed i i needed another player there because griffiths uh, got sold and or loaned i forgot we will look in a second and um loaned and i had an open space i mean mm, griffiths yeah I, I think he kind of his stats kind of went down a bit i remember him being somehow a little bit better i don't know why his finishing was at least 17 but i remember him being better at physical abilities not sure not sure and considering that we bought purchased him for 4.1 million dollars and right now i was trying to sell him for like 1 million or something Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to buy Griffiths. I mean, what? He played 17 games, scored four goals. 17 games, scored two goals. He wasn't really constant in uh, this season, but the last season I do remember him playing him. Maybe that was a bad decision. I don't know. Well, for sure, I think. So, this guy is on loan. We saw, we saw Troy Dinley. As I've said, he wasn't Premier League material. And he got injured again. He and then I sold him, and his salary was something like thirty something k. The thing is that <coughs> we sold him, and then uh, he demanded money in order to move. So basically, for one year, he had uh, another year in, the, in his contract. I'm going to play something like twenty two k per month, and Dundee United is go only going to pay eight per month. So I'm basically paying the difference yeah and i the the deal was accepted by the director of football who by the way i kind of cancelled in some trades because i was trying to sell uh you will see botticelli but no uh, christian batocho and he was cancelling the trade the, tra the trade i mean i was asking for 500k this sum and somehow the deal appeared and it was cancelled no no idea why the offer he was refusing the offer i don't know and it was because of the uh, director of football. It was a bug or something. We sold Reese Brown. Um, he didn't improve. Of course, he also didn't play to improve. But uh, I kind of prefer to, you know, move on. We got some money, not too much. And we sold this dude. <laughs> you know why? I mean, look at his stats. His passing is nine, right? He had aggression. He had teamwork and work rate, leadership. But uh, because of the, the, the contract that I signed when I first purchased him, his salary went to 50k. Like 52k, 50,000, right? 52,000 dollars. And I said, okay, you are not, you are way too valuable. You, you, sorry, you have a much higher salary for your, for your skills. And I basically sold him for 700k. But when I bought him, uh, 200k went to the old carb and about 300k 
went to him. So basically, I only got like 200k profit. Uh, well, not profit, but money. <laughs> so yeah. And the reason why I basically sold him, besides the uh, salary, was that his passing is 9. And if you remember, I'm basically playing with uh, high tempo and uh, direct passes and pass into space. And with his passing, he won't be able to do that. And I do want to counter-attack. And if he gets the ball, he will just do bad stuff. At least that's the theory, right? So history, as you can see, he only played 19 games last season. Not too good. So anyway. <coughs> Lassad, free transfer. We got rid of him. Not really happy with it. Well, with him in general, he wasn't really a good player at all. Uh, we got uh, some players on loan. We sold Boyata to Wolves. We got some decent number of money. Uh, why not? We got him for free. We got more money. Considering the salary and all that stuff. Uh, I also sold Risky. There was also no point on keeping him. Uh, at least Wolves got two players. Two of my players some loans and of course we also sold this dude who i totally forgot about him and then he came back and i was oh shit, i have this guy and let's sell him and we did sell sold him so this is about it this is the upgrade uh, upgrade update of uh, the team i played like a madman in the past two days a lot let's see what's going to happen this season i hope you guys are excited hopefully i'm going to survive uh the games that i played are 3 0, z yeah, 0 3 with Tottenham away on their stadium. And you will be like, uh, yeah, that sucks. Well, it was 1 0. And then in the end, they simply scored twice, which are goals based on skills. I mean, their skill players. But other otherwise, it was okay -ish. Like, it wasn't they destroyed me. And again, as you know, my team is not really. I'm basically. They are kind of familiar with the tactics now. And uh, I'm also training team cohesion. And look, this goal. Jesus Christ, that. Never mind, I, I press space again. Uh, that number 17 did nothing. <laughs> did nothing. Offers meant for Faraoni. Look, I'm still getting offers. 10 million, 10 million. Reject. I don't want to sell Faraoni. Okay, so press F10 to reach. Uh, I want to one with Cardiff. I do believe. Uh, yeah, Sondgres scored. Yeah, minute uh, 45 plus 2 before the first, the second half. Look, Martin in the flank. Martin is advancing. Martin, 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 Snodgrass, and Boof. Nice. Then uh, they scored. Gunnarsson, number 18, not doing anything. Podil, uh, oh, never mind. Podil won, but he lost it. Then this dude was completely free. I mean, these are my midfielders, and these guys were my two defenders that were basically here, and this dude free, free here. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks defenders. I, as I've said, I was actually considering selling one of my defenders and getting another strong one. Because, uh, yeah, I will show you the defenders. And then our new guy, the Argentinian, managed to score. It was kind of nice look. Bam! Nice. So basically, X run, X or however you pronounce it, form, look at him. Uh, and now substitute. I haven't even put him on the field because we taught him 6.5 and then 5.6. And that was the game that I was winning, basically. And he was playing like crap. And then uh, Toby, I will t promote him. I will play him pretty often from now on. As you can see, he's already main guy. 13, 15 tackles and 30 uh, tackles won. Three key tackles. Nice. Nice. And then with Blackpool, I play with the backup team. What do you see? Delac, Adam Smith, uh, Forestieri. Well, for Forestieri, yeah, you might say Forestieri is maybe backup now, but I'm still... He's not backup. I'm going to rotate him with uh, the Arden Argentinian guy. Tom Kearney uh, improved a lot. I mean, I am also got I got a shitload of offer for all my players, actually. It was kind of hard. They started to want uh, new contracts and so on. 
<laughs> and with Newcastle, I got some occasions, they still got possession, but we weren't completely helpless, right? I mean, maybe in attack. They, they still don't pass pretty good at all uh, around. They don't pass pretty good around. And they got a freaky corner, yep, uh, goal. Pretty nice from Fuchs. We need more Fuchs. So this is it guys for this episode. Sorry that it was too long. I kind of forgot to start my stopwatch. I actually got a stopwatch on my phone just to see that that just to make sure that I won't talk for too long. This is the update. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Let's see what's going to happen. So thank you guys uh, for watching this. Uh, see you soon, I guess. Goodbye.